Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello and welcome back to the Lost Signals Reviews Film and Television. We are here with another uh kind of lost movie uh a movie that came out just last missed. year that we didn't that we didn't review but we all kind of wanted to so we're back to do it now um it is honey boy uh kind of a shia labeouf biography almost or you know semi-biography yeah semi yeah. directed by alma harrell and um scott why don't you give us a funny log line uh, oh, i'm yep. sorry actually hold on before you do that as I always fucking forget, I am your host, Stephen Ramosi. I am joined tonight by Christopher Morgan. Hello. Scott Thurlow. Actual cannibal. And Jonathan Ian Menzer. God damn it. <laughs> 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 All right, Scott, give us the, give us the funny log line. Uh, sure. So my abusive father and his, metaphor, his, his chicken metaphors <laughs> is the story of this film. A lot of chicken metaphors. Where I feel like where uh, like hands or eyes are the metaphors in a lot of movies, chickens are the metaphors. Some might movies. say too many chicken <laughs> metaphors, but we'll get into it. All right. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, Ian, why don't you give us the plot? In a film that is obviously false because Rob Cantor's song, Shia LaBeouf, is the actual history of Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> uh, this is a movie uh, uh, detailing Shia LaBeouf, but played... Uh, with a fictional character, Otis, detailing his uh, uh, rise as a childhood star um, uh, with an overbearing father who uses him to achieve the fame he never got and the repercussions of it as an older uh, individual, uh, now a uh, star, but established, yeah, established, but is also dealing with alcoholism and you know, uh, just dealing with uh, father, uh, daddy issues. This is Daddy Issues, the film. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, and, you're de- and the movie is really discussing the relationship between Otis and his father mm-hmm. going through this, and Shia LaBeouf and his father. Uh, by extension. By extension, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very much a, it's very much a, you know, autobiography written by Shia LaBeouf and, and written while he was like uh, going through some shit. And I'm sure certainly polished throughout the years since then, because I, I think he's been out for, he, he, he has gone to, he, he has gone to uh, rehab and come out uh, several years ago. And now he's kind of looking back over his life. Um, it's a really fascinating look at somebody who is like right in the middle of working on themselves talking about, like, I, I, I think I was saying it's like, it's like the um, forgiveness forgiveness step of the of AA, yeah, yeah. like the movie basically. Like he's really, really going into the the hurt and pain that that he had with his father. And it's so strange to see him playing his father. I'm sure that was another like level of um, his own kind of therapy for for himself, like going into this character. Um, but I think it's, I think I it's really love, well done. I I love to see like Freud break this down. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's an interesting story about this where he, um, couldn't tell his father that he was going to be playing him. Like he had to get his father to sign off on the movie, but he didn't tell his father that who was going to be playing him. In fact, he lied to his dad. Apparently, like supposedly, according to Shia, he lied to his dad about this. He said that Mel Gibson was going to play. <laughs> Because going to play him in the movie, and that's why he signed off on it. <laughs> Is it, was it. Was it one of these things where, like, Mel Gibson's going to play you? What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm okay. No, no, it was not. It was like Mel Gibson's going to play you. He's like, okay, I'll sign off and Mel Gibson playing me. And then his dad goes to see the movie in the theaters, and it's Guess like what? fucking Shia himself playing his dad. <laughs> yep. I actually read in uh, uh, an interview, I believe it was in Parade or something like that, uh, Vanity Fair, one of those kind of, and uh, they, and they were, 
interviewing Shia LaBeouf about this movie and his, or actually I think it was right after his, uh, 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 the car accident that he was in in rehab. Mm -hmm. and he was talking about his history. <clears throat> and interesting what the details of reality were versus not one to one uh, to be clear. Yeah, but uh, I think that the it's not an autobiography in the sense that a lot of these events didn't ha uh, actually happen, but it's capturing the emotion of, of how he felt about his father. And I mean, I believe the true story is uh, he got a job on a Disney series, uh, yeah, and his father Steven was paid to chaperone him, and they lived in a motel for a long time. But it's not like they were hunting for work. Like in this one, it was, uh, but again, it doesn't matter how it's different than reality. I think it does a great job of cap. It's what he wants to say to his father. And he actually has Otis in a sense, I think say a lot of things uh, uh, to his, the, his father that he, uh, Shia wanted to say to him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So maybe that leads over to themes, but if we're talking about scores, like I'm looking at at very least a very strong two and I could easily go to a three because it's not a long film. It feels like, I think they pack a lot into a short time. And I think that's a credit to both the directing and the, and the acting and the screenwriting itself, or the script writing itself. So like, yeah, I could, I would say mark me as a three for now. I could be talked down a little bit, but I think because of the fact that it's trying to capture that sentiment that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, I think that's the heart, literally the heart and soul of the film. So the actual events, like, it's not like the most compelling story but the compelling part is the relationship. So I think that is the, you know, again, the, the skeleton upon which everything else goes around. So well, given that- we're, we're talking about structure like that. Yeah. Uh, generally, I, I find it cheap when movies cut to the, show the end first and then, uh, build it. but I think it actually worked quite well in this because they showed the car crash, the repercussions, and then the showing how this uh, uh, flawed person uh, uh, became who he was. And, it's a, not a level of mystery it's in a sense it's uh so you're drawn in with that uh mystery of how and then it goes to a character piece so i'm actually leaning on a three as well yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna Any tell towards. you i'm actually gonna tell you why this works because i agree with you usually in tv when they show you the end first it's because they realize they have a shitty uh episode and they want something to keep you from they want you to keep you tuned in after the teaser but actually, in this thing, they started off kind of in the last third of the story. Mm. So yeah, if you're going to put right. pull yeah. the narrative back, his time in rehab would probably kick in two thirds of it. And they basically started off with the beginning of the third act. Yes, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, that is why. No, because you're like, you generally, generally hate this. And I'm like, yes, that is a pet peeve of mine. Um, and thanks to uh, Ronald D. Moore for pointing out why that is usually a cheap shot. Um, but yeah, I am going to probably agree with the three. Um, this is definitely um, this is definitely a character piece. And I would back to uh, I think it would I think him playing his own father <clears throat> worked because um, there was his father was not awesome. But his father also was not an over the trunk. He's not, we, he wasn't like a mommy dearest kind of person. Like, you know, he wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't that, it was much more of a complicated, it's a much more complicated yeah, relationship. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I, th I think I'm, I think, I think I'm right there with you guys. I think I'm going to give it a three. I, I, I loved the way that the plot developed and like the, this, the starting the movie on absolute you know, rock bottom, I think was perfect. It showed like how he got to there. It, it went, it went in two directions. Like it, it, it went towards there and away from there in the two different um, stories that they, that it was telling. And I think that was like really well done on that. Like, all right, I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to take it from here. Like, here's how I got here with the, with uh, little Otis's story, I guess. And here's how I like grew from there and like kind of, got to the point where I can, you know, function again. Um, and I really like that. It's the story of kind of three Shias, <laughs> the two Otises that are representing Shia and then Shia playing his own father. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a really fascinating 
vehicle to tell a story and like a way to tell a story. Um, and I think it, it really held my interest the entire time. Well, you mentioned that starting at rock bottom. Well, I remember he starts off uh, like the Transformer XP, uh, Transformers uh, uh, action film. Yeah. And that's pretty much his rock bottom's career. <laughs> so, um, so it's even more deeper levels than that, for sure. Indeed. So it sounds like three's all around for the for yeah, the I think plot. So. I think it holds very strongly together and is very compelling throughout. So, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Scott, uh, bring us into the themes of this story. I shall certainly start. So, like, as I mentioned, I think the themes are probably what this entire movie is actually based upon. Like, sure, it starts off, as we just said, but it quickly becomes, as you said, Chris, a very deep and a personal look at a character piece about a relationship between, you know, a child star and an up-and-coming, like, child star. And it's, like, his sort of, in quotes, D-Gen father to an extent. And, like, sure, his mother's mentioned. She never shows up. She's not a character in the film, but his relationship just his situation is explored and then how that as you said Sivo reflects upon uh old old Otis you know uh modern day Otis if you will played by sorry what's his name he's been in a couple of things Lucas, Lucas something. Hedges yeah Lucas Hedges right very, so like, very good actor yeah right? he's like of course like yo he's the Shia XP for you know the 20 25 year old Shia but yeah I think the themes are like the heart of it where he it's it's a strange relationship and they both realize it and that sort of drives their motivations and personalities throughout it. And it's a very deep exploration of that. It's almost a therapeutic piece, both in universe and of course, like somewhat out of universe, like in real life. So I think that's a very fascinating aspect to it. And I think it was handled quite well. Like you felt the emotions, like you many, many scenes, like I said, the whole thing is built upon their interactions, their rapport with each other. And it's a tempestuous relationship but believable at the same time. So good. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, <laughs> okay, okay. little boy blue and the man on the moon. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's somewhat reductionist, but I'm not saying you're wrong about that. Sure. It's a really good reference, but good. I'm giving you the one, I think, cause it explores it quite well. And is, it's never saccharine, I guess, never maudlin. You might say Chris about it. Like it's always very realistic, believable. And yeah, it goes to like some uncomfortable places here and there. But I think that's obviously the whole point unto itself too. So with that, that's my argument. That's my thoughts for a very strong one. And go on, boys. The chicken, uh, though. <laughs> what does the chicken mean? I think Scott and I agreed while watching this. It, it's, it's, especially towards the end, used a little too much. Too much chicken. And uh, I, I think it actually detracted a bit from the overarching. Uh, it's almost like uh, being too clever in a sense, uh, or uh, I don't know. It just didn't. It, it didn't like, work okay, necessarily. Film, I get it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know. uh, I don't know. If that, that doesn't detract from the entire thing. I just wanted to point it out that the chicken motif wore on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I agree. But other than that, well, it's because there's nothing to anchor it. There really wasn't. I, I think. I mean, the poop joke aside, I don't. Really, I didn't really see any anchoring of it. It's referenced, right? Like, okay, sure. Like, it, it was a fine, like, um, early on story, like anecdote that his father tells him. But then, yeah, like, it's a chicken poop joke. Right. right. But like, or like, you know, like I talk, I trained, blah blah blah. Like what he said. But I feel like <laughs> it was unnecessary to keep going back to it, like. Or to have the chicken lead him back to his father. Yeah, that many times, yeah. Actually, I would have been cool with that if the, if the chicken were a symbol for something that they had established beyond the, the thing. And, like, because, you know, the chick, I mean, the, the last half of him following the chicken and ending up at the motel and having the conversation he has with his dad, that was all internal, metaphoric, whatever. And that would have worked, sure. but I didn't really understand the motif. Yeah, I mean, I agree. That's my one complaint, but I'm still giving themes so a strong Explain one. the chicken to us. Go ahead, yeah. Yes, what you got, buddy? All right, let me, let me attempt, I suppose. Um, so, I don't know. I, I just see the chicken as, a, as the symbol of his father's, like, lost, um, um, you know, entertainment, er, entertainer uh, personality right like it's 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 basically the chicken is the symbol of what he thought what his father thought would make him big right and that is kind of like 
the dragon that he's been chasing, I guess, if you want to say it in that way. So like, it's kind of this, it's like it reappearing is like, he's still on his father's, it's on the path that his father has set for him, regardless of like, whether or not his father, whether or not, you know, um, his name is James in the movie. I don't know what his actual father's name is, but you know, whether or not his father um, is really setting a good example, he still is like chasing the, he's still chasing the chicken uh, the entire time. And like, I, I think you. that's, I think that's kind of the idea of like why he follows the chicken to, to the end of the road, like at the end of the movie. Um, Jeffrey is the father's actual name. Is Shia's father's actual name? Yeah. I think in the I think in the in the movie it's, he's James, but yes. right, I don't nice. remember them yeah. saying it. But either way, okay, yeah, go on. Um, but you know there is this I, there is this thing like I, I love the the pictures at the end that like really just reflected scenes from the movie. Like it's like his father was actually this fucking guy, you know? Like it really showed kind of like how close the people were and like you you know this is this is billed as like this um fictional biography almost but like it seems like it was very close to like the parts that were important were very close to like what actually happened to shia and like his father clearly meant and means a lot to him um but also really fucked him up and I feel like that happens a lot in showbiz and, and sports also in the same way. But like, I think the chicken is just a, a, a fill in for like, he's following the chicken, but really he's just following his father. You know, like I, th- I think that was kind of what that was supposed to uh, entail. Now, granted, was it a little bit overdone? That's Maybe. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not confused I'm about not that. Saying it wasn't, saying, yeah. but, um, like I got that within the first two chicken uses, not, there's no need to be six. Yeah, I, guess, I, I will. I will say that um, I didn't mind it that much, but yeah, I could see how it could it could be a little bit much, or like be a little bit grating. Like mm-hmm. uh, as you as you do it over and over and over again. There's chickens everywhere in this film. <laughs> um, uh, aside from that, uh, in terms of themes, I think I think it's very obvious that this is his. I, I mentioned it earlier. Like this is his like um attempt to forgive his father for really fucking him up and like look at his father as a as a flawed human being you really get to see like through shia playing him you get to see kind of like the shit that his father went through like his you know ptsd from af- after being in 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 the military and like that affecting all of his life and like his uh problems with drugs and stuff like that and 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 alcohol and yeah i i you know it's it's all kind of laid out there it's not like it's a hidden theme by any means uh it's it's all really right there but i think it's i think it's really well done in the way that in the way that it is addressed in this movie i i can't i can't even imagine myself uh it's weighing from a one on this on this one, so I'm gonna what give it a one. Is it, what is I'm it with us and PTSD lately? I mean, <laughs> every it's like for the last month we've had like one film per week. It wasn't even intentional, but yeah. No, 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 no. As <laughs> soon as I saw his dad with that, I'm like, holy shit! Because it's uh, American as apple pie. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, a lot of PTSD in this general vicinity. No, Ian. Unfortunately, you're right. You're absolutely fucking right. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna give it a one. Uh, I won't go on a rant about the military, military industrial complex again, but yeah, it's uh, it is. Um, yeah, I'll give it one. Yeah, like I said, final thought for me is it, it. It clearly was like again the the core in which upon which this film is film is built around, and that means like it's going to live or die almost upon that, and I think it does it quite well. So oh, yeah. uh, Shia becoming his father to understand him, it's uh, it's at it's least a very shy thing to do. Yeah, but it's it's such a fascinating attempt of right. something I haven't seen much of uh, yeah. in film. But I have to give it credit. If anything, it, it works in the film, but also the balls to present this. It uh, yeah, uh, as an artist itself. Yeah, yeah. If, if nothing else, it's a wildly original like way to make a movie, and I, I really have to give it credit for that. I, I, I completely agree. More people should do this therapy. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, so, Chris, why don't you tell us about the antagonist and who you think that is? Thine own self. To thine own self antagonize. Yeah, seriously, it is. It's Shia's story, and it is an inter- the, regardless of whatever happens externally. The it is an internal. It is an internal narrative, and in through therapy, it, the the whole the whole film is framed around um, his twenty two year old self. So everything that happens is for lo- to to paint with a broad stroke is his own memory. So um, it it is it is him trying to put everything together. Which is why at the end, when he sits down next to the pool and he said, I'm going to play you, or I'm, going to, I'm going to make a movie about you. Um, and then him riding with his dad in the motorcycle. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say Jeffrey Craig LeBeouf. Jeffrey Craig uh, LeBeouf. The actual father, because uh, he has antagonized Shia so much that Shia had to go back decades later to make a movie to uh, uh deal with it it's the mo- it's a very meta thing but uh, uh but on that thing james represents the antagonist here because now it's shia obviously has a lot of issues with mm-hmm. his father and uh, whether it's the fictional version in this film or outside uh i mean you don't go and make a film if you're not antagonized uh incredibly by someone in a sense you're not thinking about it pretty yeah. like closely for sure I mean, yeah, I agree. Like, um, it's like the specter of his father almost. Like, it both is his father and like the memory, like the impression that his father left upon him. Again, both internally to like the, I guess the the semi, as you said, autobiographical events and like what happened to Shia the person and actor himself in real life. So yeah, like I I think that is the antagonist. It's pretty clear. It ties pretty closely into themes. But I think again, like that's inescapable. That's the whole point. And again, if you give one a one, if you have to give the other a one. And I will do that. I think Chad did a pretty good portrayal. Like, yeah, it's an ambitious, like, like you said, someone ballsy ass move to play your own father who you have like very fractured, like, you know, feelings about and to make that into a motion picture that is about a, 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 an XP of your actual life. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think I think it's James, um, his father in this is is the antagonist. But it's a really fascinating thing. It's like it's this is the story about forgiving him, right? Like that's that's the entire idea of this is like going through it, like reliving your past trauma in order to get past it and. Um, and you know, if you want to have some kind of relationship with your father again, like forgiving him for the shit that he put you through, and 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 realizing that, you know, he's a person. Like, yeah, he was kind of shitty <laughs> a lot of times, but like, he's also a human being, and um, he also had his own PSD, really. As well. Yeah, well, a hundred percent, he he absolutely did. Like, he he was living through his own shit doesn't forgive him for any of the stuff they did to his son but sure but he he was a fully fleshed out character in this for sure like you saw what was really eating at him you saw like the the things about him that that made him human and you saw things that made him like kind of a monster right like um i will give full credit for the portrayal shia labeouf does goes above and beyond like i don't i i can't imagine like playing this character he's um, got one speed. your own like abusive father like Go. kind of abusive yeah. father yeah. like i can't imagine like going through that and like dealing with that and like he really really sells out and does the best acting that i've ever seen him do and to be honest i'm not a shia hater i know there are a lot of people that are but like i actually kind of like his acting in, in a lot of stuff but like i think this is the best role he's ever played uh, by like a wide margin, I think he's amazing in this, and and does such a just really. I mean, granted, he knows this character. Like it's obvious he. The knows, source material is there. It's obvious uh, he knows sure. this character and knows how to how to portray it. But like, he just really sells out on it and like goes all the way. So I, I gotta give him full credit. And 
you know, James as an antagonist is the perfect, like, really flawed, really shitty parent who you're able to see the good parts of, like, right, right? Like, uh, you're able to see, like, the redemption of. Mm. And, and, and at the end, when he, you know, in that dream sequence or whatever the hell it is, like, forgives his father. Um, it's a really affecting scene because it's played so well throughout the entire movie, I think. And I'm going to give it full credit for that. Yep. I agree with you guys that James is a protagonist, but I caught a lot of the more Antagon. internal stuff. What did I say? You said Antag. Okay. Uh, that he is the, the antagonist. He is the catalyst, so to speak. But to me, I was, get, I was twigging to more of this being an internal journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not discounting the fact that he was is that too. Yeah, no, sure, I, I, but my whole point is I have huge fucking daddy issues that affect me to this day. My father's mm-hmm. a fucking sociopath. He never, you know, never laid a hand on me or anything. Um, but he, the guy fucked me up. I mean, but at the end of the day, I, he is an antagonist of mine. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, the things that I live through are me fighting myself to overcome those things. And I got that deep sense of that where when he had the forgiveness of his dad, um, and you know, I, for my own reasons, I can't, uh, for my father. Um, and that's what, well, you haven't made a motion picture about it yet. I'm not going to write a script and I'm not wasting my time on him, but, um, (laughs) no, but seriously, the reason the ending really affected me and I can't describe it because I will start calling, um, was the fact that I, I, and I was, I'm going to explain because I'm giving it a one and I'm not saying I don't disagree with you, but I'm explaining why I said thine own self is because if this is a flashback, aside from the fact when his dad goes to the strip club, because then it becomes objective, pretty much most of his flashbacks are subjective. Mm-hmm. And the ending to me, again, it, it's not a consistent narrative because obviously with Tom, his big brother, um, I'm, I just twigged to the internal emotional stuff so i didn't want you know i agree with you guys i also see the internal struggle yeah. that the Perfectly character reasonable, man. Has. yeah no i just want to explain it because it seemed very simplistic what i said but um i really twigged to a lot of what he was saying um and i and it's always a movie like this that really upsets me the most because they can do something their fathers were in such a way where there could be forgiveness or could be understanding. There could be an explanation, PTSD, whatever it is. And, you know, it's our podcast six years into it. We've all bared our own soul. So I'm going to bear it now. There is nothing I can do. There's no explanation. There's See, nothing. Here's the thing is, it's not forgiveness necessarily. He makes his father into a tragic figure. He yeah. depowers him through making him, not only a real person, but uh, I wouldn't say less than that, but just like uh, pointing out that like uh, it's it's removing the power he had over him. But I think, I think right. But, I think it's kind of what it is. He has to he has to turn him into that so that he can allow on. himself to to yeah. forgive. Or like you know, it, I, I think I think part of it is forgiveness. But you're right. It is like but taking so, away the the superpower that you're father has over you when you're a child right Sorry, right but by the same token otis has to forgive himself at the same time oh yeah. there there is that aspect of it because i don't <laughs> but one of the things about addiction because so i just know a lot of therapists and um i know with uh, you know a certain amount of um addiction running in my family not me generally but on the outskirts there does come a certain point where you have to forgive yourself. I mean, any of us who have been in therapy where you have had trauma, where you're acting out based upon something, um, you kind of have to, in owning, I am speaking completely of myself based upon my trauma with my father, Mm -hmm. but you have to kind of forgive yourself the times that you trust, that you mirror him or you acted out because of some antagonism in your past. This is why Mm -hmm. this movie really fucked me up. (laughs) <laughs> that's like i came over and i'm like i'm going to scott's now um and um, a little it, bit. <laughs> yeah i did I notice i went there and I, ironically enough I, I hit i hit my first two bourbons were pretty quick um <laughs> no because there is there there is so much there, there this film is so complex 
in in a few I don't want to say broad strokes because it's not that, but there's so much going on, you know, with, with his story, I can see the antagonist, I can see the internal thing. So there isn't, there's gotta be acceptance within himself. There's gotta be forgiveness within himself. And there has to be at some point where he has to come to peace with his father. I mean, right. and it bless his heart for doing that. I mean, bless his heart, bless his heart for do. Look, I'm speaking. I mean, the fact that he made he this movie age. and he did and he put it all there. I mean, you know, he's, he got okay. something that I'm never going to be able to have. No, I feel you. Um, maybe just always reflect, ties into both, but thematically as well, like it's a power sort of, of of art, if not to heal, at least to help you cope with something that was traumatic to you. And this is the vehicle for that. So I think it ties in and yeah. Yeah, for to, sure. To wrap it all up, I'm definitely giving it a one. I think it goes hand in hand, like, like I said. One's all around for antagonists, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go on with protagonists. Um, Otis is the protagonist of this. I think we probably all agree. Mm. Um, there is the young Otis at age 12 played by Noah Jupe. And there is the older Otis at age 22 in rehab played by Lucas Hedges. Lucas Hedges is this character that's kind of like, or is this an actor that's kind of like blew up a few years ago, kind of the same time as um, was he in X Men or one of the a lot of stuff, not X Men, I think, or maybe, but I thought it was first class, wasn't it? He was in he was in Manchester by the Sea. So. He was in Three Billboards as well. Uh, who are we talking about again? Uh, Lucas. Lucas Hedges. Oh. Lucas Hedges. Yeah, but I, 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 you know, he he kind of got big at the same time as Timothy Chalamet. And I feel like I was always like, all right, who's in the next good movie? Like if Lucas Hedges or Timothy Chalamet is in it, it's going to be a fucking good movie. All right, good. Uh, but I think that he does a fantastic job as the older Otis. And I think uh, Noah Jupe is actually, I yeah. assume I'm pronouncing this correctly, it's J-U-P-E, Jupe. Let's uh, give him credit, yep, for sure. As a young actor, mm -hmm. incredible. With with a tough role to play, like I really like, he Intense is just like shit, being man, right? cursed yeah, yeah, yeah. at constantly. Like, you know, this is he really has to like hold his own um, in terms of acting, and I think he does a great job. I will. I, I wanted to on this question. I wanted to give Lucas Hedges big props for like really, really nailing some of Shia LaBeouf's mannerisms, like just like in his acting like they don't look alike at all but he kind of feels like a shia person <laughs> you know I like especially you like the first scene where he uh yells you don't know how good i am at what i do which is something that i think shia actually said like when he was arrested pretty sure that uh, is true yeah i think that's like on camera or something like he fucking feels like he, he's got he's got that big shia energy you know like he mm. just feels like shia labeouf uh the entire time like and it's he does a great job of this kind of uh style and there's like i don't know the the as far as protagonists go i think i think the both of them do a great job uh uh noah is just a great child actor i'm looking forward to seeing his career blossom because i think that he really held his own with some very good actors uh, who were really at the top of their game, Shia himself. And um, actually that, that's, that's, that's mostly it. We'll, we'll get to this conversation in supporting, but mm -hmm. like, I feel like the three, again, like I said earlier, the three Shias <laughs> are really where this, As it were. are really where this movie super shines and and is very very good um and in terms of protagonists i i think that seeing i i wonder what it was like for shia labeouf himself being on this movie playing his own father to have to act against himself as a kid you know like uh in in two different stages of his life or oh actually only one really but like to act against himself written by himself. I, I wonder what it was like for him to watch all of his movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this one came out after he did that stunt, I believe, I think. Yeah. Not stunt, but, you know, did that thing. 
But I don't know, like, yeah, I don't much want to add. I'm going to give it a one, Steve. I'll mark it one. And yeah, like, I agree. Like, it's sort of like a weird, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, like, bizarro interpretation because of the very fact of the very setup of it. But like, the fact that, uh, for, maybe it's just me being soft, softer as I get older, but I've been, I would say, the past couple of movies that featured, that happened to feature child actors, they've been pretty fucking incredible. So, like, maybe that's a sign of the times in Hollywood uh, as well. But I don't know what to say. But, yeah, Noah killed it. Agreed. And the fact that he had to, like, play off such an intense, like, many scenes were so fucking intense that, yeah, it's very impressive. So, and, yeah, and, uh, and uh, you know, Lucas has always been solid. Don't get me wrong. Like, I instantly recognize him as, like, your know, 22-year-old child. And, like, you're right. Like, the mannerism thing, I think, was a good point, Sivo. That's pretty good. Like, if you're, like, more familiar, like, okay, I could definitely see, like, that being an actual thing that actually happened, right? Like, it, it yeah. has a, it has that little, like, um, a veneer to it. He really does, like, I feel like he, like, went to went to Shia school with Shia, like, and, like, <laughs> learned how to sure. talk. Like, he's got, like, the, just his, like, you know, rhythm of speaking down like, really intense. well in this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to add. You guys go, but I'm... I'm giving it a one. So, oh, I just hope that Noah, as a child actor, isn't drawing from experience for the role he played. Uh, <laughs> Let's hope. But yeah, oh, one. One. Ones, ones, ones. All right. I think so. Uh, Ian, talk about supporting. Well, there I are could. a few supporting characters in this, but this is a movie about a father and a son. And yes, I would say perhaps there's two important characters. That level of importance is debatable, but there's Tom, who is uh, the uh, big brother, uh, kind of a, a sort of sort of foster father figure. Sort of get yeah, it's his mom's his boyfriend, basically. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, playing a sort of supportive role, but his uh, real father pushes him away. And then there's the uh, uh, woman from the motel who he kind of finds intimacy with shy girl i think is what she's yeah. like actually that's exactly her character name yeah. Yeah. she's not even named yeah uh and uh they um and they both are kind of alone in the world and find friendship there but overall i'm probably leaning on a softer zero for this because i think that uh this secondary character like a short story Sometimes secondary characters aren't important, and I don't think the secondary characters are important to this. It was folk, it was almost laser focused on the two Shias and the father. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I don't much more to add. I think that is the case. And so, via like again, not a fault of the film, not that it was bad, but I think because the focus is indeed that, that sort of doesn't leave much room for the secondary for the supporting characters, even though they were good and fine, like when they did appear on screen. But it, it's. It wasn't the point. It was a laser focus, as you said, character piece between father and son in both eras, like, you know, 10 years later, et cetera. So, yeah, like, while they were good, I just don't think, like, they, they weren't, again, the, they were tangential at best, and that means, like, they just narratively have to fall on a soft zero, at least for me. So, good. Yeah. So, I, here, here's what I'll say about it. Um, I think that there were good moments of the supporting characters but there's it's it's really like none of these characters were developed in any way tom was developed uh almost solely through uh discussion between um uh otis and james right like otis and his father yeah uh and when he was there he was there to make a point about how James is kind of an asshole, basically. Uh, literally, Shy Girl, played by FKA Twigs, who... I've never heard of her before. What? No, she... I mean, she she's, she's out there. Go check her out. But, like, it's... Her this role is, is, is so underdeveloped, it's like fucking i i mean i i get it like i feel like they were trying to make this like a minimal 
story, they were really focusing on like one relationship, but they put that relationship in there. I feel like she could have been developed quite a bit more and not even using a lot of time in a movie to do it. I mean, maybe, but uh, sorry, Chris, I might still say something like that might have diluted the film as a whole. So go ahead. Like having, having a, having his soul, uh, female interaction, <laughs> uh, be developed would have diluted the film. You think like, that's the problem. Maybe. Right. No, like, no, 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 no. I can, let me, let me, I, I think I can help this. Maybe. Sure. You can help it. Go no, be, don't be sorry. <laughs> because I, as I said, it's more of an maybe. internal thing. Um, I actually believe that if Tom never showed up, it probably would have been better. But I yeah, think I could, I could cut out that I, little part. He wasn't even. But I think, line. but I think Shy Girl was um, none of the characters, and I agree with you, Ian. It's going to be a softer zero for me. But I don't see the characters as much characters in themselves, but as what they needed at the time they needed them. Like Shy Girl, whether or not she existed wasn't the point. It was his need need for intimacy because she was intimate with him. And he paid her because that's the way she saw everything was some kind of currency. His life was currency, you know, everything. Uh, but at the end, his night with her where it was just pure human contact, you know, he came to her defense. So in a sense, I don't think it was her, whether she was there or not, literally or figuratively in this film or not. And I'm sure she was real in this film. I don't know, but she, but her character is more of a symbol of his how he um how he viewed intimacy um and as i said that's the thing about tom is i liked him being off camera i liked you know the parental figures aside from his dad being off figure because when he confronted tom in a lot of ways that seemed like the most tropish part of the film it was kind of the a weak scene i agree but my, my whole point is that the reason i was saying that is because i was kind of like see you guys circle around and i'm like i don't want to lose my point but the, to the point with the characters, I, as I don't, I, I think they were developed to the extent they needed to be. And again, considering the framing is more of a flashback kind of thing, I didn't really see the, the secondary characters doing anything more than facilitating the, emotion, the emotional state of our protagonists. Let me ask you this really quickly. Do you think that um, we'll call her Shy Girl because it's the only name she has in this movie? is a uh, fundamental developmental step in uh, Otis's life in the movie, like in terms of the movie? M maybe. Well, we don't see him with any friends. Uh, and she's the only friend he has. No, I'm not, right. I'm not negating her presence. I'm just saying that she, in, in terms of this, seemed to me more of an extension of himself, of what he needed rather than, well, my, she didn't seem to be a character of her own right. She just seemed to be a source of comfort for him. And I'm right. Not that's that's that what anymore. I'm saying. Like is like so. That's the that's the entire point, right? Like because because this is very very uh, the movie is fundamentally uh, Otis's viewpoint, right? Uh, she is kind of taken as a. I mean, like you're, you're saying like she's kind of a character that uh, fulfilled this one need for him and then didn't have any other like for like sure does other, not have like other uh, like other supporting characters didn't have any other real characteristics because yeah it's just the way that he's viewing them right two lonely souls who found each other yeah and I'm not negating the fact that she was important like I said it's 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 very subjective in a lot of ways. And I'm not negating her character. I'm just saying that her character seemed to me more to not be a character, but more to um, reflect his emotional state and the way he viewed uh, relationships. Yeah. Like I said, there wasn't no, really much development. Um, like I said, and I'm not, I'm not trashing. I, I no, I'm, I'm not, not trashing her. Are, but like, I'm, my, my question is like, why? So like, I, I feel like she and um, Tom are kind of similar characters. However, Tom has character development, at least in terms of like he shows you who he is uh, in that scene. Like he's asked a bunch of questions and he gets to say who he is, whereas you don't actually know who she is other than what's kind of like 
put on her by by uh, uh, fucking Otis, like young Otis, right? I, I think that like, I, I, I wish that I had seen more of her character come out in their interactions than like just being what he needed as opposed to Tom, the character who is who gets thrown into the pool because of who he is, right? Like but she see, doesn't she doesn't show who she is, he shows who he is. It, but, I think you're comparing why, those two characters. But which is why I think it would have been better actually if we never saw Tom. Because I think it would have been I kind of agree with that. he would have been he would have been this off camera, you know, like the mom. Natasha Mione played her mom and she had a couple lines when she was on the phone. You never saw her mom. Yeah. You never saw his mom. In a lot of ways, I think it would have been better if you didn't see Tom. And the only person he had a connection to was this this other, this, I guess she was a teenager, maybe? Or, you know, later teenager? It's never really um, set out right. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that she kind of seemed like this angel of mercy when, she need, when he needed her. And at, ter- at first, he kind of returns her love with... Um, uh, with uh, monetary and then at the end he realizes that he is missing this thing because after that he has a hallucination not, he has a fantasy where he's talking to his dad and saying what he needs and his dad is reciprocal and then when he actually does and confronts it his dad rejects him um, and it, when his dad accepts him the acceptance comes with his dad when his Dad says, let me show you a treehouse and takes him over and they pull off, you know, shows the marijuana plant that he grew. Plants. It was a pretty big, pretty big bunch of it was a, garden. It's a pretty decent crop to be hiding off of the 101. <laughs> but, you know, right by the river there. But the thing was, it really tied into the, hey, they're bonding over addiction, essentially, something that would lead to, God, I'm gonna sound like a Nancy Reagan or something, but in a lot of ways. You know, this is how they. I've always them. thought of you as an Nancy Reagan. It's a gateway. It's a gateway uh, bonding. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I, as I said, the supporting characters really seem to be more. Well, I don't want to say window decoration because it's they were important, but they weren't their own characters. I just want to say that if you ask me to tell about my friends that I had when I was ten, they're all going to be one-dimensional characters because I remember only the surface details about them but anyway fka twigs is a singer songwriter from england she's worked with uh, asap rock in future okay awesome. yeah she's been she's been around for a while awesome yeah you say you, you said check her out see what she got there but i guess my final thought is they at the end of the day to me they were basically like extensions of the themes mm-hmm. and therefore less characters unto themselves so that's why like yeah, yeah. it's a soft zero but it's still gonna be a zero at the end of the day given like the greater scope of the narrative so agree so it sounds like zeros all around let's move on to dialogue scott all right so on paper dialogue pretty solid in action ele- is very elevated like the performances are fucking rock solid m- more than rock solid so yeah and like yeah chris we, we we toss around we might overuse the term organic and natural and so forth but i think in this instance those are the terms i can't help but use them because yeah, it, there was some intense stuff and like it got uncomfortable, but that's the realism of it. And I think that's the appeal of it. Like that's why it's very compelling. So I'm looking at a very, a pretty damn strong one for those general reasons. You can delve into it more and more. Like if you, you know, I'll let, open up in a second, but all I'm saying is like at the outset, that's what hit me when upon like watching and upon reflection when the movie was like the credits were rolling. So yeah, I have to give the script writing and certainly the performances a hell of a lot of credit for selling this whole film and for making it work. So uh, this is mixing with style, but uh, there's a scene where it melds reality with his fictional uh, TV family. Yeah, that's right. And I thought that that scene was outstanding and a very honest. Uh, actually, uh, something that uh, actually certain like I, I've seen that kind of the comparison between what we see on the media as a, a kind of an ideal versus the reality before. So, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I absolutely love the dialogue in this movie. Uh, top to bottom. It was phenomenal and phenomenally acted. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point, Scott. Like it's, it's very good on paper and it's uh, exceptional in action. 
Um, Shia, Lucas Hedges, and Noah Jupe all do amazing jobs with, with the dialogue they're given, and uh, it's fantastic to see it, you know, all come out under the direction of uh, all Run out in real time, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to give it a strong one. I don't have too much more to say, but yeah, it's the dialogue is great. Anything I'm going to say is going to bleed over to style, so I'm going to give dialogue a one because I think Scott's opening salvo said it all. All right, well, then talk about style, Chris. Okay, now I'm adding on to the points that Ian brought up. Um, number one, I love the way the movie began, <laughs> where it, it opened up with him as an actor going, no, and then blowing up and him shooting behind him. Yeah. And then, and because it, it's... The parody it kinda, of a Michael, and parody Transformers, as somebody said. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I like, I, I like Shia Buff a lot, and I hate tra- all the Transformer films. Well, at least the ones I've seen, or the parts of the ones I've seen. Um, but I, I thought it was a great way to begin the film and then to kind of segue that into the lunacy that is his life and then with the car crash. And I, I really like the fact that it was this whole artifice that, um, you know, you saw parts of the green screen, you couldn't get his harness off of him. Yeah. Um, I just, I just thought that was such a wonderful, fantastic way to open this up. And, and he's been dealing with that his whole life, as you see later on with the like flashback. Yeah, and I think I think what Ian said before is important because I think a lot of it is the uh, what the, the things they showed him doing when he was performing, like the, you know they juxtapose that as a kid. The first thing you see is a pie in his face, and he's having he has a harness on. You know, it's just like back di- different ways of being being hit with an explosion, so to speak. Yeah, um, I thought I thought that was a really really fantastic ju- juxtaposition. I thought. I thought um, with, in terms of um, um, helping to solidify um, you know, the emotional state, what's going on, to have his reality and his fantasy blur. Um, and I'm also gonna say about dialogue was everything that wasn't said between the characters, because they did take a lot of time, a lot of time with, um, just emotions they, 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 they weren't afraid to just um, hang on a character space um, and, and I think I think a lot of I think a lot of it like my whole thing with um, Shy Girl being uh, the, uh, the intimacy that he wanted as a child there's barely any lines between them but their interaction says so much of what they're doing um, so I mean, this is a very strong one. I'll pass it off to you in case there's anything I missed, but those were things that came to my mind first. No, I mean, not much. Uh, just one aspect of it, I guess, which I'll leave to probably you, Steve-O, but talking about the cinematography, yeah, it was fucking spot on. And like, for, a lot of it is very intimate, right? They're in the hotel room, just talking to each other or like they're on the movie set, but it's still like, it's very close focus. Or when um, Lucas is playing like the modern version, you know, the adult version of him in the rehab center. Again, same thing. Like it's all very, like it, it makes you feel as if you're like literally right there next to the character, what in whatever um, circumstances happening. So that was very, very effective. And yeah, just the shots themselves were again, very crisp. Like they, they were blocked beautifully and I have no complaints at all. This might be like second or third of the strongest aspect of this film. And I'm g- giving it therefore a very strong one. Yeah, I, th- I think. Oh, go ahead. E. <clears throat> Shia LaBeouf. Actors' lives, uh, actors live dependent on being validated by other people's opinions. I don't understand what it is that I do. Uh, was I do that people want? I don't know what an actor does. I have no credentials. I don't know what I'm doing. To my mind, talent doesn't really exist. Talent is like the card player's luck. It is motivation, ambition, and luck. It's just a drive to be the best. I think acting is a con game. He goes on in that interview. It's Parade Magazine. Is uh. Uh, well, from what, where he goes that uh, he got to start uh, dressing as a clown and selling uh, for his father's selling hot dogs out of a cart. He goes, and now I'm selling uh, uh, Steven Spielberg's hot dogs. <laughs> um, uh, he's like, it's no different than the two. It's a con man thing. And I, uh, well, not surprised. The good actors are all screwed up. They're all in pain. It's a profession of bottom feeders and heartbroken people. And I think that uh, his disillusionment with acting and trying to elevate 
adding meaning to what he thinks is a meaningless existence uh, uh, really was sort of the style of this film and at the heart of what I guess this was themes as well but like I, don't know, I was very impressed by uh, uh, he, the, the visual telling of that con game along uh, uh, with uh, uh, the narrative of it. Hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think that uh, honestly, like for a little while now, I've been somewhat following Shia LaBeouf's path, and it's it's wild. Like he, I, I feel like you're right. He kind of looks through a lot of the people that are a lot of the, what makes you successful in Hollywood. Not all of it. I don't, I'm not sure that like he 100% nails it in terms of everything, but like, he's got that. He's got a lot of people fucking completely, you know, pegged. Uh, and I think that he looks out at the landscape and realizes what it is. And I think that, uh, plays a lot into the style of the at least the writing of this movie hmm. now in terms of the directing um alma harrell or Har- harrell i don't know how to pronounce her name but she is a incredible like this is one of the movies like th- this is what we we're talking about uh briefly i think for a little bit last year about how uh female women filmmakers are like really getting left out a lot of times. And like, this is a movie that I think could have like absolutely should have been nominated for something in the Oscars. Right. Like certainly if not best picture, then it's fucking something like th- this is an incredible picture, but she got the DGA and that is, I and think it, maybe in some ways it's better, more respectable. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, well, to some degree, like that's, that's like being respected in your, by the people in your craft, but it's not very being respected by the by the by the world, critics. you know. Like no, by the, the critics. The, the, right. the world, the world. Said I guess the English patient was best picture. So I mean, I mean, I you know, I I, I give the Oscars more credit than usual last year because they they picked Parasite as best picture, but like the the world the world made Avatar one of the top sellers. So yeah, well, exactly. Like I, you know, I'm I'm sure that there is a wide margin between being respected as a a professional of your craft and being respected uh, otherwise. But speaking purely of style, you're right, Scott, the cinematography in this movie is fantastic. The um, acting is wonderful. I think it was, I don't know if I would, if I was a casting director, I don't know if I would have picked Lucas Hedges to play like young Shia LaBeouf, basically. Uh, but he was a fucking great choice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they have a really good young uh, talent in uh, Noah. I think he's a rising star too. I'd love to see more. Shit he from was him. he was great and like really held his own in some very harsh <laughs> yep. scenes, some like yeah. difficult climates. I would say. Um, I thought the music was really like the soundtrack was really yeah. good. That's what I was waiting for you to address. And then- um, just well done in general um and i i guess that's kind of it like i i I think that this is overall a really well done movie style wise and i'm gonna give it a one the whole package of style i think is a very damn solid one so steve you know you know you could just talk if you have any questions about shy you could talk to katie I know. Well, I, 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 to him. We should have got Katie on this podcast. I, I, to be honest I, with you, I was texting her before this, and of course, she didn't respond until after we started. <laughs> as soon as we start recording, like my texts and messagings are blowing up. I'm like, God damn it! Don't um, worry. But, We're but have to watch just a an quick episode of ours while he's claps in the background, of course. But um, I just a quick story. Uh, uh, she's met Shia a few times, and they went out to dinner. Uh, down when uh, he, he showed up at Rutgers Camden where she works and um, he basically got up from the table and started helping the servers bust and all that stuff because <laughs> he's just basically like they needed help or some I don't remember the, the whole the story table, dude. but yeah. basically he is yeah he basically said these people need you know they need some help on their side so he got up and started I've been thrown out of restaurants for that. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, you ain't Chad LaBeouf, so. I was to say, you're not Chad LaBeouf. All right. Well, I think it's one's all around for style, right? Yep. Style LaBeouf. Uh, <laughs> and then we're going to go on to recommend. Ooh, I, like gonna, wow. I like it. Wow. 
I was trying to go right. I was trying to like regard, uh, uh, but like uh, I'm gonna go. On right so yeah, uh, this is a movie you should watch. I think it's uh, fantastic. I was really impressed. I am kind of upset that it didn't get any love at the Oscars last year, but you know I'm used it to got being love on the New about, Mexico yeah. Film Festival. What was that? Yeah, it got love at the New Mexico Film Festival. Hey, New Mexico, you guys really and Sundance, so fucking did it. What a Sundance now, and that's not that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I don't but uh, but yeah, no, one for recommend, and on to you, Scott. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, me too. Sorry, just to follow up. Yeah, you're right. Like it, it was like a missed film. Like we meant to see it, we were going to. Like, I just that it got lost in the shuffle last year, but it got a lot of buzz, and we were never like opposed to seeing it, and like given like the framework of it, yeah, it's fucking a worth a watch and yeah it would be nice as well if it were nominated like i could in retrospect you'd be like come on now like they really they completely ignored it but also like cynically i get it like i could see why they did it like but yeah. regardless i think it is worth a watch i think if anyone's out there debating it yes check it out it's actually not even that long of a film i think we mentioned that in hour and five. a half yeah yeah so like yeah it's totally worth a watch and it's it maybe not not the most like pleasant experience like all, as you were saying, Chris, but it is something that can affect you. So I think that's a papaya. Not, not everybody has unresolved daddy issues. <laughs> sure, but I still think it's a well done production overall. So yeah. Well, I have unresolved rodeo clown issues, so I had trouble. <laughs> but uh, overall, I enjoyed the hell out of this film. Uh, uh, actually, one of the better ones we've seen recently. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I would fully recommend it. Um, I didn't enjoy watching this film because I found it trauma traumatizing. Though it did not take me nearly as long to get through this as it, a marriage story took me to get through. I was just um, saying, like, we've but, watched a bunch of traumatizing movies for you recently. Jesus Sorry, Christ, Christ. putting yeah. you through a grinder, apparently. Like, <laughs> yeah, recently, seriously. So. God, it's a good thing we've been doing this for six years and anybody who's <laughs> actually been following us for six years Suck it knows up. that at one point or another we've all bared our souls. But um, Unlike Marriage Story, um, I think it would be a crime not to see this. I mean, Marriage Story was excellent, don't get me wrong. I did not recommend that because I, it was just really too much of a tough watch. This film is so unique in a lot of ways, and it is so personal, and it is very uncomfortable to watch in a lot of ways, but I think it is a gem. It is, um, it, it's like... It's like no, it's like Squid and the Whale versus Marriage Story. Both were excellent and both were honest portrayals, but Squid and the Whale is much a smaller film is more of a gem. This is comes into the whole um, thing where you know it it is a very personal film. It is very it is not an easy watch probably for you know people like me, um, but I think it it really is. There's so much here to to ponder and. I, I just, I really have to recommend it. I think it's a great film. It's a great film. I hated you all afternoon while I was watching this thing. I'm like, fuck Steve-O, God damn it. But no, but no, Steve-O, honestly, this was a great film. So, Learn to forgive you know, yourself and Steve-O and enjoy the film. I, yeah, exactly. I forgave us both, Steve-O. So it sounds like we're all giving it nines. We all took a point off for supporting because the supporting characters weren't that great in this. And then... Uh, what the point is all. Is not even... No, they were, I was just going to say, yeah, the they point? were... Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's going to be an aggregate score of a nine. And, uh, unless anybody has anything else to add. No, I think, I think that's fairly good. Like maybe like if you ask me offhand, like I give like an eight, five, but it, it's a very hair splitting difference, but yeah, it's a goddamn good film and solid as hell. Very good. Uh, film from last year. Everybody check it out and we're going to wrap it up. So I have been your host, Steve Ormosi. Tonight, joined by Christopher Morgan. You will not divide you. <laughs> Scott Thurlow. Dickens forever. And Jonathan Ian Manzer. I, I'm pretty sure I'll be a worse father. So. <laughs> Have a good night. That much is true. See you next time. Everyone's invited. He will not divide us. 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 Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods? <laughs>